Hello all. Let us start this session on OpenMentor.net on defects analysis. This is the third phase or third step within the system testing phase. We talked about uh, test planning, test execution, and then the analysis, right? Typically, uh, you let us take a population. You can analyze this population based on uh, employment details, right? Again, how many are employed? How many are not employed? Within employment, sector-wise, okay, in agricultural sector, how many people are employed? <coughs> in manufacturing sector, how many are employed? In IT sector, right? Uh, one person here is asking why to analyze, right? If you don't analyze, you cannot track your progress. You do not know where you stand, right? Unless I know the I know where I stand based on critical statistics, right? The statistics is always helping us to know where we are, and it will tell us where we are heading, right? That is why we should analyze. Same way, testing is a clear indicator on quality. If you do not analyze, you do not have a measure on quality. That's why we need to analyze. Okay. Now coming back to this population analysis. Then, age-wise, right? Health analysis of the population. How many people have got diabetes in this age group? How many people have got blood pressure in this age group? That means you collect raw data, then plot. Based on some x-axis and some y-axis, you get analysis. So we will be using uh, bar charts, uh, pie charts, right, like this, to do analysis part of it. So when we do this analysis, we will have a very clear indication of the numbers. Numbers, also known as metrics, are typically the loud items by management. So all the management people will do this analysis. Now, in this case, what am I going to do in this case? Here, let us go back again to the population. Education level. How many people have finished up to schooling? up to high schools, up to college, undergraduate, up to postgraduate, how many PhDs, right? If you have that calculation and the numbers, then you can do a better educational system, right? Where to improve. It can, it can give a lot of clues. Same way in defects. There are a lot of metrics are used to analyze. The first set of metrics is called defect distribution. Again, when I say distribution based on modules, within the HR system or the CRM system, which module has got more number of bugs? Which module has got less number of bugs? Again, I can do based on severity. How many showstoppers we found, how many high severity we found, Ideally, it's a good thing for testing team to find a lot of high severity. If they find a lot of high severity issues, that's a bad metrics for the development team. Right? Same way, based on um, priority. Right? Even based on tester. Right? Which tester found more number of bugs and plot them against severity? Basically, you are distributing the population towards education, health care, age, right? Employment, salary levels, right? Uh, mother tongue. Same way, you distribute the bugs based on modules, severity, priority, and the tester. This will give a clue. The second thing on defect, that's a matrix, is called defects age. Means time between a bug is logged and closed, right? 
how long a complaint takes to get solved in your country right if you have a case filed today if it is getting solved pretty close that means the judiciary system and the law is very good if it takes it years and years and years it's a problem same way when a defect is found today how long the development team takes to close this fix and close shorter the age right better is the system shorter the age better is the process and the system that you have got in place this is another matrix people definitely use to ensure that we are we are finding yearly we are closing yearly another thing that people also use is defect leakage that means we already talked about error and defect during defect we also have one other field origin right there is something called origin can be requirement origin can be design origin can be coding origin can be even a bad communication right right origin can be even hardware right based on what this defect has happened is it because of bad coding is it because of a bad design is it because of bad requirement is it because of bad project management right uh so defects or errors leaked from this phase if they are found at this phase that's a problem how many defects leak and what is the duration of leakage longer and more the leakage it's a problem to the system so we should try to find out more errors than defects right that's a defect leakage in previous years they used to have something called a defect density right the same defect density is uh, calculated in a different way nowadays previously what they do is they measure size of product based on kilo lines of code if you have got a uh, 1000 lines right it's called a kilo line of code one kilo line of code Right, kilogram. You got kilo line. So if you find the defect density is nothing but number of bugs divided by size in KLOC. So if you have got forty uh, thousand lines of code and you have got forty bugs, that means uh, you have got uh, one bug per kilo line of code. It's an indication. right it's nothing but if you if you talk about manufacturing industry they call it as ppm parts per million right out of million quantity how many parts are uh, bad so same way how many bugs are expected in a kilo line of code that's an indication of your impurity in the system but nowadays they calculate in a different way right defects found per hour right hour of testing i would say if you text x number of hours how many bugs you find so that's an indication of your speed of testing right and again you can always talk about there is something called a test planning rate that means uh number of test scenarios or say conditions divided by number of hours spent to document that to plan i would say this is called planning rate same way execution rate you can always say test executed divided by number of hours of execution so you can you can find out how many hours are spent by the people that based on the time sheet then you can say okay if my testers work in one hour i can i can expect these many number of tests to be executed right these are all some of the key metrics that people analyze and there is always something called one other important metrics again i won't say it's a metrics it's it's a typical uh, number it's called uh, exit criteria 
it is also nothing but uh, release threshold some companies call it as release threshold when should I stop testing can I keep on testing it again and again yeah what is the release threshold that means below certain bugs only I can release the product it is also called as go no go decision should I release the product or not release the product go means release no go means don't release then how can I do it you cannot simply say yeah if you have only um, 18 bugs anything more than 18 bugs you cannot release the product anything less than 18 bugs you should release the product then that 18 may be showstoppers so severity wise right put the threshold right so they will put certain numbers this is like a pass marks it's very simple pass marks in education they will say in each subject you should score this much in internals you should score this much in external practicals you should score this much in games you should score this much so you put pass marks against each of this threshold of course there should be no showstoppers this will always be zero right high we always set zero we should not have high severity bugs but some companies still it's a question mark uh, they will still release it then for everything what is the threshold below which we can release the product above which we should stop the product so this is called exit criteria based on this exit criteria only the release of the product will happen to the customers after that only it may go for acceptance test or after that only it may go for launch of the product so this is called exit criteria right based on all these things right why should we do all these things right understand lessons learnt from one project will be applied to the next project on the next project right then only we can keep on improving okay last time I made these mistakes learn from the mistakes right last time I did this mistake our team did this mistake let us correct this now last time we converted that to a matrix and a number this time we convert it to a number let us compare these two numbers have we improved right so use this analysis for improvement there is one more matrix especially product companies will do this is called bug bounce rate that means you start plotting build number number of new or reopen bugs right in each build how many bugs you find right let us say build number 12 I found uh, 8 bugs build number 13 I found 4 bugs build number 14 I find 5 bugs build number 15 I find 2 bugs right it is very difficult that you can bring it to 0 right but you can still find but if you start plotting reopen or open bugs right then we can still see this going like a curve right oscillating it may not be just coming to zero it may go up it may go down it may be oscillating if it is keep on oscillating then it's a problem again the oscillation the maxima and the minima should be pretty close it can oscillate around two or three then they will put a bug bounce rate they will say uh, allowable range is between uh, two and four bugs you can find only two or four new bugs max before after that it should be stopped release will not happen so bug bounce rate is also one of the things for product companies right because one bug uh, may manipulate to million installations in product companies so they are very uh, sensitive to this bug bounce rate so based on all these analysis you can find where you stand then you can improve based on these numbers so always convert everything to numbers which are nothing but metrics this is called bug analysis again people use a lot of tools to do charting bar chart pie chart stacked charts 
when we talk about test management tool in subsequent sessions we will show how to use these charting tools to plot this okay again these are all some of the key metrics people look at it there are some other metrics which will also be dependent upon company to company uh, that you can learn only from you get only when you get into the company right i'll stop this session here thank you